welcome to the nonprofit show. We are so glad you're here. I am live in Nashville, Raise One Cause Conference, day two of the conference. Really excited to be here. You know, uh, the conference itself has just shy of 600 individuals, and everyone has brought their energy to really be a fearless fundraiser. I also want to say thank you to Julia Patrick that created this amazing platform, The Nonprofit Show. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, and I'm Jared Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We also want to give a huge shout out of gratitude because whether we are live on conference floors or in our home studios, we always have the support of our amazing presenting sponsors. So thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University. Also thank you to Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the companies day in and day out that stay with us to help produce nearly 900 episodes. So I wanna say it's October the 10th, we are coming up on our 900th episode. So again, thank you to our partners. If you missed any of our prior episodes or you hear about some of our guests that are on today and you wanna to listen to them again, you can find us on an app. So go ahead and download the app. If you're watching um, the show today, you can scan that QR code. You can also find us on streaming broadcast and plat uh, as well as the podcast platform. So we are around here for your viewing entertainment and pleasure. But my first guest has been on with the nonprofit show before. Thrilled to have him with us. Sean Olds joins us. Hello and good morning. Hey, Jared. Hi, Jared. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, really excited to have you. So, Sean, you've been on the nonprofit show before, but for our viewers and listeners that may or may not know who you are and um, what you do, the amazing service that you provide, tell us about yourself and the amazing company you're representing because I had the great opportunity. We met one on one on Sunday and had a wonderful conversation. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Sean Olds, I'm the co founder and co CEO of Boodle AI. I'd like to say we were doing AI before it became cool last year. <laughs> um, but we provide a predictive analytics platform powered by AI to help nonprofits find their best donors and steward them along. At the beginning of this year, we took a bit of an evolution, leveraging the power of generative AI and use of technologies. Um, to basically take everything we've built over seven years, add it with generative AI for a one plus one equals three opportunity. So if you're using ChatGPT, MidJourney, Bard, we provide one interface, one place for you to be able to do all of your work, experiment with other new technologies in the generative space as they come on board, and be able to help you engage your donors in a more effective and efficient way. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. You know, when I sat and you did this walkthrough with me that was beautiful, I am so excited, and I know there's going to be other viewers and listeners equally excited. Yesterday, you were part of a discussion. So tell us about that discussion yesterday. You know, our viewers and listeners across the globe, truly, not everyone can make it to the conferences. So let's pull a little bit of the conference out into our viewers and listeners. Tell us about that presentation and conversation you were part of. Absolutely. Well, we had, as you know, Barbara O'Reilly, who was on yesterday yeah. moderating this. And uh, she was looking at basically the old school versus new school mentality and, and what we can do as organizations. Um, and what I love, one of the comments Cherian made who was on the panel was it's not a binary decision. There are things that we've done well that we need to continue to do. Um, and, and kind of an analogy is we went from a horse and buggy to cars, but we still use wheels, right? The wheel worked. And so if there are things that are work, that's great, but let's find the ways to leverage technology to take it to that next level and make us even more effective and more efficient. And one of the big things I try to convey is AI, other technologies are not coming to take people's jobs. Or I jokingly said on stage, it is actually coming to take your job, but it's really coming to take the mundane parts, the parts we don't enjoy doing, and the parts that prevent us from really capitalizing on what we're good at. And so find ways to leverage the technology to take that mundane work away so that you can meet your mission faster, better, and more efficiently. You know, when you say take the mundane things away, I'm like, please, you can have them all, right? And I'm curious, Sean, if you would tell us what's the difference between AI and generative AI? Because is there a difference? Sure, AI, artificial intelligence, is a large umbrella. And under that umbrella are different types of AI. Generative AI is a new type of AI, but it falls under there. You've got machine learning. Um, you can take things like facial recognition. 
all of those fall under the very large umbrella of AI. And so you have to be careful. And one of the things we talked about on the panel yesterday is a lot of people spend time chasing technology. It's the worst thing that you could do. The best thing you can do is fall in love with your problem. Understand the problems your organization has, because not every piece of technology is going to be able to help you. But if you understand what your problems are, it's going to be able to help you connect and get through the, the morass of technology that's out there to the thing that's really going to help your organization. There's, there's a lot to learn, I think, with technology. And I, unfortunately, was not on the show, your dedicated episode here at the Nonprofit Show. So again, for the viewers and listeners that want to know more about Boodle AI and Sean, please do go back to that prior episode. It's on the archive. But I'm curious what you're seeing, hearing, and feeling here at the conference, because I feel that we're all looking for additional innovation. So what are you seeing what are the conversations you're having with some of the other vendors, sponsors, and attendees like yourself? Well, I mean, the great thing about the race conference is it is very technology. -based. There's yeah. a lot of technology people here. Obviously, with the, the, the launch of ChatGPT and Bard and, and, and Rocket last year, there's a lot of people asking questions about general AI. What does it mean and what does the technology look like? Um, I think what's exciting is one of the first things most people in this industry are looking at is how do we do it responsibly? Yes. Um, and yeah. so in the panel yesterday, we talked about, for those of you who are interested, there is a group of organizations coming together um, called Fundraising AI. Fundraising.ai is the website. It is its own nonprofit. Um, really making sure that our community takes a responsible approach to how they're leveraging data, how they're leveraging machine learning, and how they're leveraging AI so that we're doing the right things and setting a standard. Yeah, doing the right thing, setting the standards. So I love that you're part of that conversation. I presented yesterday on rinse, repeat, and recycle your content. And one of my suggestions was to copy a previous article, plop it into, that's the official term, plop it into chat GPT, ask it to change it, you know, 20%, summarize it, that kind of thing. So you can rinse, repeat, and repurpose some of your previous content for organizations what is the next step you're seeing, Sean? Because I know you are at the like, you know, the peak of discovering and probably rediscovering some things that have been around, but maybe new to our sector. What are you seeing is like on this the cusp that we should be paying attention to? Well, I love the rinse repeat, right? Because you take your content, you take what you've done, yeah. and you teach these LLMs. And and one of the things I would encourage people is don't just use ChatGPT. Use it. Yes. But use Claude, use yep. Bar. Um, I was telling someone last night, I, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and every night when she wants a bedtime story, I will not use ChatGPT because it's not creative. My, my daughter thumbs downs any any bedtime story out of ChatGPT, <laughs> but she loves the ones out of Bar. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Claude. Claude wow. from yeah. And so one of the big things I encourage people is don't get myopically focused on one LLM because one LLM may work really well for you in your major gift fundraising, but it may not be as good in writing descriptions for your auction items. And so experimenting in the platforms are out there, one of them being Google Box, that will allow you to experiment across all those platforms and better understand what's going to suit your organization in the best way possible. There's a lot of options. I get a little overwhelmed, but I'm curious, our viewers and listeners that say, okay, I'm I'm curious about Boodle and what you're doing. Is that accessible to everyone? Is it an invitation only? How do we get access to this, Sean? Sure. Well, we haven't advertised it. It is not open to the public, but we are accepting people who want to test our alpha. And so if you go to boodle.ai, there's an opportunity to test the alpha version. It's got about 30% of the functionality that will be out there when we launch. Um, but if you're kind of more forward thinking, it's no cost and you want to play with something that you will probably break and we want you to break it so we can make it better, um, go to boodle.ai and you can sign. Permission to break something like <laughs> I don't think you get that often. Um, Sean, this has been a fantastic conversation. And before I bring in the next guest, I'd love to have you share with our viewers and our listeners where will you be next? Because I'm curious, you know, again, you know, not everyone is here at this conference that maxed out just under 600 individuals, but there are other conferences coming up and you are in this space. Uh, so where are you going next? If our viewers and listeners say, you know what, we're going to be nearby. Maybe we should check that out. 
Uh, my next conference, beginning of October, is actually going to be in Orlando, the International Catholic Stewardship Council meeting, a okay. uh, very faith-based uh, conference. And then beginning of December in Baltimore, the Nonprofit Power Conference, uh, put on by Nonprofit Pro. Okay. Well, Sean, thank you. I appreciate you joining us here. Absolutely. And enjoy the rest of your conference. Great. It's been fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks, everyone. Well, Sean Olds, again, he's been on the episodes before, a dedicated episode. So go back and check that out. He's got some really cool things happening. Again, I had the pleasure of sitting down with him one-on-one -on, -one on Sunday before the conference even started because we thought, you know what? There's a lot of energy going on at the conference. We might as well set some dedicated time. Well, I want to bring on our next guest for today's episode as we are here live at the conference. Come on up. Today we have also Kevin Spikerman joining us. Kevin's with Charity Buzz. Would love for you to tell us, Kevin, a little bit about yourself as well as Charity Buzz. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Uh, and again, thank you. Amazing conference that we have here. Um, I think the two things about the conference, um, culture and content. Okay. The culture here is amazing. The yes. staff that One Cause brings yes. is just top notch. You walk in, it's welcoming. Um, so the culture here. So if you're thinking about coming to raise, you got to come to raise. Yeah. Uh, and then the content. The content that they bring out is unbelievable. They go over the basics. They also bring in new stuff from like the AI, like what Sean is talking about. Um, they're just on the forefront of everything. So yeah, the conference here is amazing. Uh, but a little bit about Charity Buzz. Um, what we do, we're an impact marketplace. And so what that means is that we have 250,000 plus registered bidders on our site that are ready to bid on auction items. So charities can bring their items to us and we'll auction it off for them. Best part about what we do that I love is that once you give us the information, we build the lock page, we promote it, we market it, we sell it, we then send you the funds as an unrestricted grant. So there's no work to the organization. You said my favorite word, unrestricted. Yes. <laughs> that is something I think all of us are looking for is really that unrestricted dollar. You shared with me because we got to, to meet up also on Sunday at a reception for the conference. You shared with me a really cool success story from Charity Buzz. Is that something you can share publicly? Because I'd love for you to do that. Yeah. So we have a, a lot of organizations that we work with, but we had this, uh, one organization um, just because of the, the you know, SAG and the, the strike in LA with the, the writers. Yeah. Um, so Julia Roberts, um, she was willing to do a lunch with her. It's a two hour lunch. So an organization brought that to us. So we had a two hour lunch with Julia Roberts and it sold on our site for $140,000. So that's $140,000 that's going for an organization. Um, Julia Roberts, obviously that's, you know, an amazing experience. Yeah. Um, but she gave up two hours of her time. Uh, we have other things like dinner with the cast of The Office. Uh, we have dinner with Matthew McConaughey, uh, things like that. So we've got, we got a lot of celebrity things, but the typical organization that we're working with doesn't have mm -hmm. right? The typical organization has, you know, tickets to a suite right. or you know, lunch with the CEO that they know. Um, so it doesn't have to be this over the top amazing thing. Um, this has to be an experience of some sort. Thank you so much, Kevin. You know, really looking at that, I see the opportunity is a like it's ample for our organizations because you're right. When we look at um, the makeup of our sector, I still say 1.8 million nonprofits registered in the U.S. and that's just the U.S. We have we have friends, you know, in Canada that that's not counted part of. But there's so many organizations truly that are small to mid-sized organizations that may not have access, as you just mentioned, to celebrities and even other experiences and opportunities. Have you seen this with other companies like a charity buzz type? And then that's my first question. And then secondly is how do we get involved? If this is something that we say, okay, we want to level up what we're offering to our supporters. How do we get involved with these opportunities? Yeah, well, I think the, the first thing is, I mean, I don't know anybody else out there that does what we do and has this network yeah, of bidders. Either. I mean, 250,000 plus high net worth individuals, the average net worth of our bidders is over $3 million so that these people can spend money. Wow. So if you're a small nonprofit and you keep doing auctions and you're like, we just, we wish we had more eyes. We wish we had a better audience. Yeah, That's what we bring to the table. We bring that audience. And you were, you were telling me, Kevin, uh, that... We don't have to have a specific event planned. We could do this at any time. Can you describe that opportunity? Yeah. So any time of the year, 
mean, you could go to charitybuzz.com right now and there's items that are up. So we run okay. things for two weeks at a time. You know, so if you brought me an item today, we'd post it for two weeks, we'd close it, we'd send you the funds. So if your gal is in September and in March, you yeah. get a round of golf donated at a private country club and you don't know what to do with it. Yeah, like we can't wait till October or September. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can work with us any time of the year. You can have post one item, you can post multiple items, um, really it's anything. And our threshold is it has to have a thousand dollar value. Okay. And that's that's kind of the threshold to kind of get in the door. Um, there's no sign up fee, there's no contract, there's no usage fee, it's just an 80 20 split. So exciting. You know, it really is exciting. Um, again, that unrestricted opportunity is huge. You have so much to share with us. And just a teaser, I have already booked you, Kevin, to come back on to do a dedicated episode here on the Nonprofit Show to share us more about Charity Buzz. Because our viewers and listeners, again, across the globe, I feel like we're we're looking for something that's a little different. We're looking for something maybe that we have not done before. We asked this question, and it's a crystal ball question, Kevin. If you were to have a crystal ball, shine it up, right? Like get it ready. What are you seeing for the future? Because many organizations right now, you know, we moved into our fiscal year, maybe if, if you started July 1, right? What are you looking in your crystal ball for the future when it comes to fundraising, maybe events and some auction items? What are you forecasting for us? Great question. I mean, I think the forecasting, I think going back to the basics, I think everybody needs to go back to just doing the basics, but then also like what's new. And I think, you know, I think what's new is that it is exciting when you look at all these companies that are here and all the speakers that are here and what they're sharing, you have to evolve, right? Yeah. And if you don't evolve and try new things, you're yeah. going to be left behind, you know, but the basics of writing a handwritten note, right? Thanking your donors that way. Like that's something you just have to go back to the basics. Yeah. The basics is really important, and I love that you bring that up because I feel sometimes, myself included, I forget that going back to basics and the simplicity of building relationships is really important. We talked about on the show before return of return on relationships. So, like that metric as opposed to an ROI, which is just as important, but I think that relationship, you know, is really important. You mentioned the speakers and there are, I want to say 50 plus speakers here today. There's a lot of conversations going on, a lot of um, innovative conversations going on. I'm going to put you on the spot, Kevin, because there's also, there's other vendors here, but as a vendor and a sponsor, what are you hearing and feeling from the camaraderie of the vendors? Because you mentioned culture and content. How are you seeing that culture take place into vendors supporting perhaps one another? Yeah, no, I think it's extremely collaborative. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what I really enjoy about this conference is that it's very collaborative. You know, when somebody comes over and talks to us and they need consignment, I'm saying, go check out Charity Ace or Windspire or Auction Packages. And, you know, oh, I know them well. So, you know, people are shaking hands but pointing them to somebody else. Um, and it's, it's not a hard sell when you come here. It's very much, how can I help you? What are your needs? And can I point to them? If I'm not good for you, I'll point you to somewhere else. So it really is collaborative and it's about helping people fundraise, not selling them a product. It's about what is your need? And as Sean said, what it fall in love with what he said, fall in love with your with your difficulty, with your obstacles. Yeah. yeah. Right. And once you have that, then it's like, okay, what do I need to find a solution? Yeah. The camaraderie, the collaboration, that, that is so plentiful here. I, I really love that as a piece of the culture. I feel like you're right. We're all here to help each other. We're all here to help all of you, you know, uh, around the globe to support and elevate your mission. There's a lot going on in our sector, a lot of excitement going on. It wasn't until for me, Kevin, just a couple of years ago that I realized how tech focused, tech forward, our sector has become and looking at, again, back to Sean, right? Like embrace those challenges, embrace those difficulties, because in that I feel is where you learn to grow um, into that next phase, if you will, that evolution. But there's so much going on. Uh, what are you excited about? So from this conference, again, you're, you're about to go back home. It ends today, sadly, it's a two day conference and you're right feels like a reunion. And I think that many of us would like to stay more, uh, more time with one another. But when you get back, what's the first thing you're going to do? 
So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is get my team together and remind them why we do what we do. I've had so many conversations with organizations um, about what they do. I mean, a lady today, she works um, at a boarding school and she helped a girl whose mom passed away. The boarding school almost adopted her and found another home for her. And as opposed to putting her into the foster system, wow. right? So I think getting my team together and just reminding them why we do what we do. And it's all about the mission statement of the organizations that we partner with. It's not about us. It's not about the person we're talking to. It's about the mission statement. And I've heard just so many stories of organizations of different people here yeah. telling me why they do what they do and why they're passionate about it. So first thing I'm doing is getting my team together, reminding them these are the stories that I've heard and the stories. And so this is what we do. We help these people. That is beautiful. Kevin, thank you. Again, Kevin Spikerman, Charity Buzz. We're going to have you on in October. I forget the date. Um, Middle of October. Middle of October. So Kevin, thank you. Appreciate you joining you. me today. Thank we'll you. see you here in just a few. Well, as you hear from, you know, Sean Olds and Kevin Spikerman, really exciting stuff here. I love that Kevin just shared the first thing he's going to do when he gets back is to really talk to his team about their why. And I think we can all reflect back on our why. Let's go back to that purpose. You know, what is driving us? What is the importance of who we are and what we're doing? So there's a lot happening here. I'm excited to bring on our next and final guest of day two raise conference here at the nonprofit show. So um, this individual, you know, we had a, a lovely conversation. And I realized she now lives where I went to college my first year, freshman year. Come on up. Taylor has joined me. Taylor, welcome. Oh, well, hi. Well, I'd like to say welcome. I'm like, wait, you're welcoming me. I I know. Well, and that's fun. So tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your company and what you're also doing here at the Rays Broadcast Studio. Good question. I'm Taylor. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Hope you're having a good day. Um, I am the owner and founder of a company called Bar Lele, and we have a sister company called Creative Shizzle. We are all about helping small organizations do more with their marketing and making things look Great, right, because you've got a lot of shizzles on your plate. <laughs> and so we take some of that off of your plate and help you get it done. Yeah. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. I love the shizzle, because you're right. There's a lot of shizzle. Wow. There's a lot of shizzle and a lot of shizzle on, on all of our plates. You are broadcasting live also. So again, you know, thank you to One Cause allowing us this studio space. Who are some individuals, Taylor, that you've talked to here? What are they saying? Okay, well, one, I actually just met Crystal Cherry in person for the first time. She is a brilliant speaker in the sector. Um, she's talking a lot about DEI, how to engage your board in a better way, um, you know, how to, she was just talking about how to focus on various ethnic groups in your fundraising. And the problem is that like, we don't segment for that. And so right. like, how are we just really tapping into donors' motivations if we're not really understanding that? Uh, yesterday, the keynote with Siri Lindley was just good. I just, I wrote down a lot of quotes from her. There's a lot of really good quotes. Um, and then I've just been buzzing around this space. Yeah. And oh, yesterday, oh, I met and I interviewed on my podcast yesterday uh, a gentleman from the Human Rights Campaign. And we were talking about kind of the major audience. They do a lot of events, they do like 30 something events. It's a lot. And he was sharing with me strategies for how they've kind of warmed that audience back up, gotten them engaged. And a lot of it is personal. You know, I'm hearing more and more of that. And Kevin Spikeman, Charity Buzz just shared, you know, getting back to basics, getting back to that basic core fundraising, the relationship building. Um, it's so important. I think at some point, maybe we took it for granted, you know, really move into how can we do a lot of things? Uh, quicker and might have taken advantage of some of these personal touches, as you were just mentioning. Um, you mentioned a podcast. So tell us about your podcast and, and the kind of conversations you have there, because you have a lot of shizzle in your plate. <laughs> so my, my podcast is Talking Shizzle. Yeah. I've done several podcasts. That's, that's the current show. 
Um, you can go find it at creativeshizzle.com. Just go to the Google podcast page. We talk about a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's the talking shizzle show. <laughs> It can gotta be whatever. It's kind of in the name, right? It's kind of in the name to recognize that there's just like a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, we really focus on helping small business owners and nonprofit organizations who have a lot to do and maybe a little time, a little resources to do it, how to break down some of those challenges. And so I, I kind of just interview people who I find interesting with success and stories to share. Yeah. Um, whether that's building a business, building a team, um, getting better at social media marketing, have a lot of you know, kind of all the things you need to think about in running a business or a yeah. I can't wait to listen to it because because great topics I'm sure are covered yeah. and you're right. There's so much to talk about. It's a, it's a little random. It's a little know? random. It's a little random. It's a little random. It's a random sometimes you say you know my last name ransom should have been random uh, but last question for you taylor before we sign off today i'm curious what are you going to do your first thing besides the concert you're attending because i know you shared with me you have a, you have a fun concert to attend personally what are you going to do when you get back out what's the, what's like the one thing you're looking forward to implementing or initiating or following up on what what's your task that's a good question because I've been on the road for about a week now at conferences. I went to uh, a marketing conference last week in Austin and then I've been here for days following up right afterwards this week. So one of the things on my mind that I've been thinking about and taking cues from from both of these conferences is that idea of like proper I get in the weeds too much too on some of the wrong things sometimes, but really it's like are we talking to our audiences about the fact that we can go back home, talk to my team, and say, like, let's look at our data. Yeah. Let's look at our list and let's make sure that we are communicating appropriately with people on our list about what we think that they care about based on what data we have. So I'm ready to implement, like, and get, get better at that myself. That's a great tool that you're taking back. I love that. I think all of us, myself included, can do better X segmenting. Thank you. It's been oh. great to have you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your, your conference here. I know there's some, some good things happening, but I appreciate you taking some time to join me here um, on the show. So thank Bye. you for that. Bye, guys. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up the conference here, day two, the uh, atrium is filling up with the attendees that have just left a conversation at the main stage. That's where I was presenting yesterday. But as we move into the final piece of the show, again, thank you to our viewers and listeners that have joined us. You can find us on streaming platforms and hope that you will do that. Again, I've been live in Nashville from the Raise One Cause conference. It's been a fantastic conference. Look for this conference to come back up next year. I hear that it's growing and they will be uh, allowing more people to join next year. Maybe looking for a different venue to accommodate everyone. So please do check that out. Also want to say thank you to Julia Patrick that created the nonprofit show and allows me to take this show here on the road. I'm Jared Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. Shout out of gratitude to our friends, partners and sponsors. Thank you to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk, these companies have been with us day in and day out to help you amplify your impact and to be a fearless fundraiser. Thank you to all of you that have joined us here at the One Cause Conference in Nashville. Again, I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd. Join me tomorrow. And until then, please stay well so you can do well. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>